Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I see some people are trickling in. Um, so my name is Megan Litweiler and I am the program manager for advanced learning initiatives at the Irving Institute for Energy and Society here at Dartmouth College. And I'm thrilled to welcome you to this session of our series, New Energy Conversations with Early Career Researchers. Um, the, the New Energy series began about two years ago to give early career energy scholars um, from around the country and even outside the US um, a platform to share their research and as a way that we can all learn about important emerging topics in energy and society. And New Energy has also become um, quite a community for early career scholars to connect and network, collaborate. So we're really thrilled with the participation that we've had in this initiative, and we are very excited that you're joining us here today. And we'll have a chance for you all to ask some questions at the end of today's talk. So please feel free to enter those using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Now, we will introduce Bob, our speaker, in just a moment. Um, but first, we're delighted to have Professor Aaron Mayfield here to moderate this session. Aaron is the Hodgson Family Assistant Professor of Engineering at Dartmouth College, and her work takes a very multidisciplinary approach to studying sustainable energy systems and energy transitions. And Aaron has been both a moderator and a speaker in this series before, so we're really, really happy to have her back. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Erin to introduce our speaker today. Thanks, Erin. Thanks, Megan. So it's my pleasure to introduce Bob Muezzi. He's a third year PhD student in electrical and computer engineering at University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, prior to joining UMass, he graduated with a master's in electrical and computer engineering from Carnegie Mellon in Rwanda. He then worked in the planning department of the Energy Development Corporation of Rwanda, where he was responsible for modeling optimal expansion of the nation's generation, transmission, and distribution infrastructure. And his current research centers on the application of data-driven methods to understand electricity demand. And specifically, he uses a combination of both re remotely sensed and ground collected data to understand how infrastructure features influence electricity consumption growth in sub-Saharan African countries. So with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Bob. I think I'm muted. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you very much, um, Erin, for the kind introduction. I think I'll share my screen right away. And uh, yep, yeah, I hope everyone can hear me. So yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be part of this uh, series and um, today I, 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 I'll begin my presentation by uh, briefly uh, talking about my, the broad scope of my research at, at UMass and then uh, spend the remainder of the, of, the, of, of the time talking about one specific project that we worked on uh, that, uh, regarding SMEs and, and, and complementary infrastructure. And so, yeah, I'll start. So basically uh, looking at Africa, at mostly Sub-Saharan Africa, there's, there's, a, there's a limited data availability. And in, in this, this, this is an interesting uh, graph I got from, from the Sustainability and AI Lab um, at Stanford. And it, it basically shows survey data, the, the, frequency, the uh, frequency with which survey data is collected in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we can see that for, for many countries, it, it's maybe five, 10, it's very, very infrequent. infrequent. And, and, and to top it all up, sorry, uh, we see that survey data is generally expensive. Whether it's economic uh, economic uh, survey data, living condition survey data, or other type of uh, uh, data needed to to plan for infrastructure, it's it's really expensive, and especially uh, given that governments in sub-Saharan Africa have limited resources, so it's uh, it's kind of a challenge. And my work really looks at methods that that are meant to fill in this kind of gap. And this is another interesting, I really like this graph. It, it, I still, I got it from the, the, the folks at Stanford and it basically shows that it's, it's, it, it, it's a case for the potential of using remotely sensed satellite data and 
other types of data to help complement survey data. And this, in this graph we see, uh, it's basically, uh, they, they look at, they, they, they came up with an average revisit interval rate for, for different, um, uh, different data sources and, 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 and regions. So for example, in Africa, you, you see that if uh, based on the current uh, survey frequencies, it would take at least a million days for a household to be revisited in an economic survey. In the USA, where um, it's, data is collected more frequently, maybe about 9,000, 10,000 days. But when we look at uh, uh, satellite imagery, uh, these, these other um, uh, line graphs are from different satellite imagery and they show uh, the, the temporal frequency is really, really good. Uh, granted, we, we miss out uh, some of the detail captured by um, surveys, uh, such as, you know, uh, when you collect surveys, you, you're able to get uh, data on, uh, on uh, uh, maybe self-reported data, expenditures and those kind of things. And you might not get them from, from satellite imagery you, uh, because it's satellite imagery, but because of the temporal frequency, at least maybe it, it might not it might not replace survey data, but it can complement survey data. And so in my research, I've, I've looked at, um, I, I'm looking at different methods that employ satellite imagery, other remotely sensed geospatial data to help understand uh, some of the things, uh, some of the infra like infrastructure planning uh, gaps in, energy, in transportation, in, um, in, in, in economic measurement. And for this specific uh, talk, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about our work uh, on, on, on understanding SME electricity demand. And this, this work was published last year. Uh, this is a, a QR code for some of you folks that want to look at um, the paper maybe in more detail. Uh, for this talk, I won't go over the, the, in, in great detail uh, about the methods and stuff like that because of time. So uh, anyone interested, maybe they can uh, they can look at that. So, and and for this work, we specifically looked at SMEs in Kenya, and 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 how electricity uh, is electricity consumption growth uh, correlates with uh, with accessibility to uh, infrastructure. And uh, so, basic uh, this is an introductory slide talking about the the importance of SMEs, right? In sub-Saharan Africa, because uh, heavy industry is not very strong, you see that uh, SMEs generally contribute significant share in terms of uh, GDP and in terms of non-farm employment, and and in, this can be seen in all the literature, and 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 so uh, the, the the main moti uh, motivation for this particular piece of work is that uh, this 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 is an, another very nice graph that was taken from June's. Um, uh, uh, blog uh, uh, about how uh, electricity consumption in sub-Saharan Africa is really not uh, not rising up compared to to other to other regions. It's not growing with with with, with access. It's mostly st stagnant and or even decreasing. So this the, uh, and some of the reasons could be that. Uh, when we look at the literature, that most of the uh, of the literature concluded that while electricity is always necessary for for like growth in rural commerce or, or, or economic activity, it is not always sufficient. Of, of very often, electricity has to be complemented by some kind of infrastructure variable. Right? So, for example, if if uh, areas with uh, stronger market access or areas with uh, easier access to roads. They benefited more from electricity and, and therefore the, 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 the communities uh, improved economically while areas that didn't have some of this uh, infrastructure uh, struggled to make use of the electricity. And so, uh, for, but, but looking at the, 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 this is another graph from uh, the Kenya National Bureau of, of, of Statistics. It's an enterprise survey and they list uh, some of the infrastructural constraints that that businesses uh, reported as 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 being the most problematic, and and we see things like markets, roads, uh, financial services, water supply, 
as being some of the strongest um, infrastructure constraints. But because of the advent of, of, of remotely sensed data, we see that some of these, uh, these infrastructure variables can be estimated using publicly available geospatial data. And so in, the, in, in, this, in this work, we, 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 based on the data, collect, data um, provided to us by the Kenyan utility, and, and, and the publicly available data sets, we, we sought to answer two main questions. In the first, we, we wanted to see how generally um, uh, electricity consumption among grid connected SMEs has improved or has uh, had the behavior of electricity consumption among SMEs uh, in, in Kenya over time. And in the second uh, research question, we, we basically uh, tried to see how some of these infrastructure variables uh, correlate with electricity consumption growth for these SMEs uh, in Kenya. And so key data sets that we use, the very, the, 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 the most important or the primary data set uh, that we relied on was uh, electricity consumption for over 180,000 uh, grid connected SMEs. And these were geolocated. So this was provided to us uh, again, thanks to KPLC. Uh, and, and, and so this graph, is, is general is 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 um, spatial distribution shows the spatial distribution of these SMEs. Uh, we see that most of them lie in, in, in the urban areas of Nairobi and Mombasa. So, and then the second data set also is is a, a location of of buildings. This, these were hand labeled, almost twelve million hand labeled buildings from uh, satellite imagery, still uh, given to us by the, the the electricity utility in Kenya. And then the second group of data sets uh, we, we, we relied on were mostly publicly available. Um, some of them remotely sensed, some of them uh, collected on the ground, but uh, publicly available and, 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 and geolocated. Things like uh, financial service providers, locations of all financial service providers in Kenya, um, uh, the population from, uh, from World Pops, Night Lights data, uh, GDP from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics and, and the like. And so um, I won't go very deep into the methods. Um, those that want to uh, understand, to, to, to get a better picture of the methods, maybe uh, uh, reading the paper would be uh, good. This, I'll just go over, over the overview just for the interest of time. And so the, the way we, we, we did this is, uh, we, we, this is, in this image, this is an illustration of, of we got for each SME, we, we, we created a buffer around each SME of half a kilometer and, and looked at, for example, the number of financial service providers and the distance to roads or, or, or the number of buildings or the number of people within this, this kind of um, this, this buffer. And it's those infrastructure that we, we, we extracted as features and then um, run a, a, a regression analysis to see how, uh, the, how areas in, in higher infrastructure, uh, rather SMEs in areas with higher infrastructure compared with SMEs in areas with low infrastructure. And so I'll go straight to the results. Um, yeah, so this, this graph, uh, we're trying to answer the, the, the first research question, how is, how did electricity consumption evolve over time uh, among SMEs in Kenya? And, and this, we, we, we split it into rural and urban uh, SMEs. And from this, we see that SMEs in, in urban areas, uh, so maybe let me try and explain the, this graph the way, the way. Uh, so in the x-axis uh, is basically the number of months that, that an SME has spent on the grid. So it's basically showing how mature uh, an SME's grid connection is. So it shows that, for example, in the first few months within like, for example, the first year, uh, there's rapid increase in, in consumption. And then over time, it stabilizes and grows at a much, much, much uh, lower pace. And, and this is uh, about five years worth of data, uh, slightly above, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, some of, well, some of the, um, uh, the SMEs were much older, but, uh, but uh, around 60 months, uh, 
uh, at around 60 months is about five years worth of data. And so we see that the trend is both is the same for both urban and rural SMEs. It's just that urban SMEs consume almost double what uh, rural SMEs consume. Uh, and the, the growth, uh, rough, almost the same, uh, the growth rate that is. And so we, we, we then also split this, uh, this into uh, further to see, we, we split into two different categories based on when the, the, the SMEs received an electricity connection. This we are trying to see how new SMEs, because there's, they, there's a push by, there was a push by the Kenyan government, uh, this last mile connection to, uh, to connect people. And it's actually the same in many uh, countries, uh, most of the countries in East Africa. There's, there's a push by, by governments to electrify, uh, push up the electrification levels. And so we're trying to see how these new uh, customers, the new SMEs that connected to, that got connected to the grid, how did they compare in, in terms of their consumption? To the older SMEs, and in and in the rural area, we see that new newly connected SMEs, those that were uh, connected in 2013, for example, uh, consume progressively less. They they peak at less electricity at at, at lower values. Uh, that, so the interpretation there is that newer SMEs uh, consuming less. New uh, uh, the the. Uh, the uh, so uh, there could be a number of reasons for that, right? So uh, maybe newer, newer, uh, newer SMEs are uh, smaller, lower income, and that kind of thing. So uh, uh, a number of hypotheses to to uh, put forward to explain this. And while in urban areas we see that this time more newly connected SMEs peak at higher at, at higher levels of consumption. And this is interesting because, um, because uh, previa, in the previous literature, we saw that uh, for both rural and urban areas, among uh, when looking at household consumption, this time not small uh, business consumption, that new, all, newly connected, uh, uh, all newly connected customers to the grid generally consumed less. Uh, but in, 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 in the case of small businesses, we see that newer, uh, new, new, more newly connected SMEs are consuming more, and uh, and this this could be because uh, maybe uh, there's there's more uh, the, the infrastructure in 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 the complementary infrastructure in, in urban areas is more uh, is better, and so businesses are, are, are able to to make use of the electricity uh, or, or generally grow their electricity consumption uh, compared to. To rural areas, for example, like uh, the markets are better in urban areas, uh, access to credit is better in urban areas, and so electricity consumption, electricity connection uh, helps. Uh, generally, is use is more useful. And so, uh, the, in, to answer the second, the second um, research question, we basically looked at. Uh, this regression, this 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 is a regression analysis, where we we, we have two um, sort of dummy variables, uh, as high uh, um, uh, an SME is considered to be uh, high if, if 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 for example uh, maybe let me give an example of access to financial services. If within a five hundred meter radius, the the um, the number of, of financial service providers available is, 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 is at a certain threshold. It's higher than a certain threshold. We consider that SME to be high, to be, you know, have a higher access to financial services. Uh, and so here is this analysis basically uh, looks at, this is a percentage difference in, in electricity consumption. For, for example, uh, SMEs in higher financial service uh, areas of financial service locations uh, consume about nine percent more electricity than those in low uh, in low financial service provider location. While in urban areas, uh, SMEs in high financial service area locations consume uh, two percent, about two percent less electricity. And and the same is uh, population and number of structures. With population number of structures, we we, we use this as a um, as a 
a proxy for access to markets. If, if, if there's a lot more people within a half a kilometer radius of a business, it means it has more access to, to, um, to markets for its uh, goods and services. And so uh, in, in rural areas, we see that there's about 10% to 3% more electricity consumption in, in areas with, with higher access to markets. While in, in urban areas, it is actually now reduced. And so our main hypothesis here, the discussion around this was that uh, while in, in urban areas, uh, locations with a high number of, of um, uh, a lot of people, for example, higher structure density, higher, uh, higher number of financial service uh, providers, these are more likely to be um, like uh, informal settlement type of places where, uh, uh, for example, slums or you know, higher density places. And so uh, businesses in those locations are generally smaller. And, and, and so uh, even with, 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 uh, with, with, uh, with, with access to electricity, uh, and, and yet, yet when, when, you, when you look at uh, businesses that are further from higher population uh, areas, uh, like hotels and, 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 and these other, they are generally, uh, bigger businesses um, and more in line with manufacturing and they have higher uh, energy density, they consume more electricity. And so uh, that, that was the main hypothesis around why urban, we see a reduction in, in electricity consumption among urban, uh, urban business SMEs. Uh, but but uh, in rural areas, the, 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 the infrastructure, there's basically a, um, a, stronger, uh, a stronger correlation for electricity consumption and complementary infrastructure. And, 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 and uh, in urban areas, uh, even sometimes, for example, population, it's not very statistically significant or when it is there, it is negative, uh, apart from access to roads. So in rural areas, still 6% more electricity consumption, for businesses in in in, uh, in higher in, in places with access to roads, and so the main key takeaways from this is that the complementary infrastructure, uh, as 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 put, as seen in the in 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 in, in prior works in, in the literature, it it there's there's a, there's, a, there's a good enough uh, correlation between complementary infrastructure, and and small business uh, electricity uptake. Uh, the thing is, it's, this is more pronounced in rural areas than it is uh, in, in urban areas. And in terms of which, um, which infrastructure variables are, are mostly um, correlated with, with, with electricity consumption growth, we found that access to markets and financial service providers. This, this last one, the electrification rate was uh, mostly used as a, as a kind of control. So, uh, we were most interested in, in the, the, the first, uh, first five infrastructure variables. And so we found that access to markets and, and financial service uh, providers, uh, rather, rather roads, sorry, access to roads and, and, and markets where the, the, uh, showed the strongest uh, correlation with, with electricity consumption uh, growth among uh, SMEs. And, and this, this is, most, this is uh, reflected even in the, in the, in the in the, in the previous literature, which showed that uh, access to markets uh, and, and, and roads were still the, like the, the, the stronger correlates, the strongest correlates to an uh, uptake of electricity uh, among SMEs in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so um, future work. Uh, this work is still, uh, we're still trying to build on, on, on this. And, and one of the um, things that, we want to look. At, we wanted to look at all we are looking at right now is the interaction effects between some of these infrastructure variables. So, for example, if a business is in, is an, in an area with with higher access to financial services but no roads, how is that different from a business that is in an area that is in an area with access to financial service and a combination of both? You know the interaction effects between these infrastructure variables. These these are also uh, interesting areas to to look at, and this 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 would be very helpful to uh, utilities or, or microgrids 
planning expansion to, to, to be able to focus or, or target such areas uh, or areas with a combination of these kind of infrastructure variables. Because that is where the, it's, it's more likely to, to, to see uh, um, a higher impact of electrification. And, and so, uh, so if there's higher impact, then the uptake of electricity is higher. So the economics of grid extension also are, are, are better, while at the same time having, uh, having um, a stronger impact on the communities that are being electrified. And in the second, uh, one of the second areas we have been uh, working on is now uh, building, um, uh, just uh, bu now looking at deep learning, right? Um, being able to predict, uh, to predict sort of areas with a higher potential of, 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 S of, of SME electricity uptake. Now using, we, we want to, to we've been uh, trying out uh, deep learning methods uh, using satellite imagery because the satellite imagery is, is, is available with good temporal resolution. So if we can leverage this and, and now build a model that is, that is at least able to, to predict uh, locations of hotspots, sort of like, I don't know if it's the correct one, but areas with a stronger potential for uptake of electricity uh, for small businesses. Yeah, so this, this, this will be complementary to our, this uh, first work. Um, and, and, then, and then also the third, the third is, is, is extending this to other uh, countries in East Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa for, for which we have data, namely uh, Rwanda, we've been looking at Rwanda and um, maybe Uganda as well, uh, and, and, and extending these kinds of methods uh, to, see, to see how well they do. Um, yep, uh, I think that is all. Uh, hope, uh, I hope I wasn't too quick. I was kept on looking at the time and uh, I hope I wasn't too quick as not to, to be clear, I guess. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bob, for that great presentation. If people have questions, please include them in the Q&A function. So add them to the Q&A function and I'll, I'll ask them live here. Um, maybe to start out, I'll, I'll ask a couple of questions. So you include kind of variables related to co-located financial markets, but how do you think about kind of access to financial markets when it, it's not just seems like a function of where it's like physically located, but you know, financial markets kind of more broadly in kind of the country. Um, and maybe that extends then to your work looking at kind of a broader uh, context beyond Kenya? Um, yeah, so um, uh, if, I, if, I, if I get the, the, the question correctly, um, so we, 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 the, the, the data on access to financial markets is, um, the, so the best kind of data we could get was just the location of financial services. Uh, and and, and it's, it's, but we realized um, um, that for access to financial services is not, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, right? You could, you need, um, you need, to, you, you need a lot more data to understand um, a firm's access to financial services. Uh, uh, like, you know, I don't know, things like maybe what, how many kinds of loans are given out, that, that kind of stuff. And, and we couldn't get that kind of data. The next best thing we, we could rely on was, um, how many, how many financial service providers are in an area? And I, it's, so we assume, so the assumption there in, in this is that if, if, if a business is located in, 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 in an area with a lot of financial, so there's these things called uh, M-Pesa, mobile money. I, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with that. It's, it's sort of uh, like electronic money transfer people, pay with, with that because, because in Sub-Saharan Africa, there's not a lot of um, uh, people with bank accounts and, and, and credit cards. So there's the growth of things like M-Pesa, mobile money, where um, uh, it's sort of financial inclusion. And so if an, a business is in an area with, with a lot of M-Pesas, it means uh, pe people are like, uh, for example, things like payment are easier, right? Uh, if, if customers want to buy to pay for goods and services, 
there's a lot of M-Pesa, they, they could easily, it's, it, it makes life easier for the business. And so it leads to some kind of growth. Uh, it leads to, uh, and so electricity uptake is, is better. Also, if there's a lot of financial service providers in the form of SACOs, banks, uh, business is more likely easier to, it's, it's probably easier to get a loan to expand. And so, yeah, that was the thinking around financial uh, services. I don't know if I've answered the, the, the question properly. But. Great. Uh, thanks. Um, we have an audience question from Sylvie. She asks, um, or they ask, could you help me understand uh, what does it um, mean in a rural area where there's a high correlation um, and complementary infrastructure in electrical consumption? Um, I'm not sure I get the question. Um, so I think the question is asking about kind of the significance of the, the variables uh, related to things like roads and mm -hmm. kind of the correlation with, with consumption. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the correlation here is, is, uh, is we have two, two kinds of, uh, of, of dummy variables. We have one, for example, um, if we, we're talking about access to roads, it means uh, if, if, if a business is, 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 uh, is coded as high, it means the business is closer to roads. The, the, the distance, uh, this, this probably is, is in the paper, but I think it was about two or three, two to five kilometers, I think, from a, a tarmac road, from a, a paved road. So if, it, if a business is less than five, I think it was two kilometers. If, if a business is less than two kilometers from a road, it is considered as having a high access to roads. And if it's further than two kilometers, then it is considered as having a, um, low access to roads. And so here, the, the, the interpretation of this is that businesses that are closer to roads in rural areas consume about 6% more electricity than businesses that are far away from roads. Uh, while and, and in urban areas they consume about four percent more electricity than, than 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 those that are far away from roads. So a question related to your future work on demand projections. So mm -hmm. how could that kind of be used in a modeling context or a decision making context? Or how do you envision that those that prediction of consumption being used in, in other areas. Yeah, um, thank you for that. Um, so the, the way I think, uh, the way most of the uh, modeling like electric, electrification expansion is done, most of the models right now, um, there's, um, like the, 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 there's an assumption about, so because you have to understand the spatial distribution of, of, of electricity consumption, how, where, uh, where is electricity cons consumption uh, concentrated? And so uh, this would fit in well in, in some of the least cost electrification planning models where uh, at least, uh, so instead of uh, making assumptions about um, making broader assumptions because still there's some assumptions in this but making more general assumptions about where demand is located, this would help uh, in the sense that uh, at, you, you have an understanding of where demand is located and uh, where, where, where demand and where, how much of that demand is, is from potentially SMEs. So this, this would fit in well with, uh, with electrification planning. So uh, it's, it's, it's easier, right? If, if, you, if you know where demand is located, then you concentrate the resources there. There's more impact there. Uh, the, the overall capital costs are lower, operating costs are lower because you, there's more po better potential to, to recoup some of the, of the investments for the utility, which can then be um, put in other areas. So yeah, that's the way I, I think about this, how it fits in. So we have another question from the, an audience member and I'm gonna try to summarize. So this question is from Paul and mm -hmm. they're asking about how network infrastructure, so I'm assuming distribution and transmission network infrastructure um, performance in rural contexts would also hinder kind of uh, uh, consumption. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we didn't uh, we didn't look at that. We didn't um, we didn't we didn't we didn't uh, consider the uh, uh, like infrastructure limitations for for rural areas. But that is um, that is a, a very good point because many rural areas are, are far away from like the, 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 there's not a lot of um, like aglom it's so sparse so. Uh, there's a lot of losses in connecting them. It's more expensive, uh, and that 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 would be, uh, yeah, that would be pose one one of the challenges. But also, if if we are at least, um, if 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 we are able to to know where demand potential demand is located, then um, I think the investment decision would be a bit easier, even because it, it's different from. Uh, from say, for example, you are, you are extending the grid to a, a location that's far away, uh, but uh, you have no uh, no idea of how the demand, the potential demand is in that area, and and and, and another scenario where you are extending the grid, but at least you have uh, you have some idea of how demand might be in that location. It it makes the investment decision easier, but still, yeah, like I said. Uh, yeah, it's that's a very uh, like a, a, a significant challenge for for potential planners. Mm -hmm. So, a related question from an anonymous audience member asks um, if you could comment on the correlation between affordable small solar systems for businesses and homes in rural communities and growth in electrical con connection and consumption. Um, yeah. So uh, for, for this particular work, we only looked at grid connected, uh, grid connected SMEs. Uh, but uh, the way, uh, like um, a scenario I would think about is, is because uh, uh, grid connection is generally more, uh, grid, grid connecting, grid connections are generally more expensive. And, um, and, and uh, the capital costs of, of extending the grid are mostly expensive compared to, to standalone uh, like solar um, um, mini grid type of, of investments. And so uh, maybe here, uh, uh, I, I don't know how this would play out because if, if you have um, areas with a higher potential of SME activity, so maybe the, 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 the trick there is then would it be more economic to 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 to, uh, to feed them with a grid or or uh, or smaller microgrids and standalone systems? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, actually, yeah, this uh, I don't think I've thought about it that way because we concentrated mostly on grid connected uh, grid connected customers. But that that's that would be um, that would be. Interesting because because uh, the idea is as areas uh, that have um, strong enough potential for SME activity would be good candidates for, for for extension. But then also the microgrid microgrid operators would love to 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 to, to operate in such areas because uh, they generally improve the economics of, of microgrid planning. So. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't thought about it, but that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good angle to think about. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Another audience question is: Is it possible that the access to certain structures and the amount of electrical demand relates to socioeconomic situation? And if so, is it possible that if in the future um, an, an SME location? Is based on demand. It could end up biasing certain communities and excluding others. Um, yeah, yeah. In a way, but uh, so the way we did the regression, um, the nighttime lights, we, we we included nighttime lights as a control sort of for um, economic activity. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the the nighttime lights is supposed to. Because uh, generally, the literature has shown there's a strong correlation between nighttime lights and, and, and GDP. And so uh, the idea here was to, if, if the lights are, are higher in, in, a, in a certain location, then it means um, economic activity and, and living conditions are, 
it's higher. Uh, but but like, like, like you say, there's, um, yeah, there's that potential of, 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 of biasing against lower income, lower income communities, because then you, you be able, you, 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 so that, uh, so the, the argument there would be, um, does that mean if, uh, if locations are uh, uh, low consuming and possibly low income, we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't extend the grid to, the, we shouldn't give them electricity. And uh, yeah, that, that, that is, uh, that's, that, yeah, that's a good one. So uh, another maybe potential kind of future work would be to look at the bias, the biases from, from uh, our methods, how, how, what kind of biases are created by these kinds of methods and, and how would we mitigate that? So uh, that's a good one, thanks. Uh, an another question, if you could have some type of ground survey that would co uh, collect additional data, what would be kind of the most important additional data or variables that you would want to collect so you can include it in a demand, your demand model? The most important I would say would be um, actually talking to the business owners and, and getting an idea of, of um revenue growth right uh, like uh, how how much is their revenues changing over time uh, because right now there's there's an assumption that um we're making a kind of assumption that uh electricity consumption is kind of representative of 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 a, of a business uh, revenue growth right and and this this could it's it's i don't think it's uh, it, 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 it's not very uh, very accurate because the, the business could be uh, could be consuming a lot of could be consuming electricity, but not not seeing because of other inefficiencies in, in the operation. It's uh, it's not, it's there's not improvement in in the in, in, in the revenues of the businesses, and so that would be I think one of the the, the strongest um, the strongest uh, the strongest kind of uh, area to look at because even the publicly available data on, on enterprise um, like uh, enterprises and, and revenues it's not geolocated it's really hard to find that kind of data so that uh, yeah that is I think the area so you showed some knowing that this is not a time series data set per se but you showed mm -hmm. generally some time series uh, patterns like, how do you think about using these model results for future projection when you know there's kind of time variant factors and there might be kind of major um, changes in the, in the system and kind of the finances coming in when you think more broadly in terms of like international finance and we're thinking about a kind of climate change and, and climate investment. How do you think about that, right? All these other factors that may drastically change kind of future demand and the ability to use this empirical analysis for future demand prediction? Um, so there's a, a lot, some of the variables where, where actually, I think uh, uh, many of the variables uh, were time varying, uh, things like population, there's the gridded population from World Pop, they have uh, estimates of population, I think, um, I don't know if I remember correctly, about a hundred square meters. So there's uh, population, the financial service provider data was also uh, time varying. Um, uh, and, and so the, the, the good thing is uh, uh, right now with satellite imagery, the, the temporal frequency of, of, of satellite imagery is really, really good. You have uh, weekly by weekly, uh, sometimes some of them almost like planet images, it's, it's almost daily. So there is um, good, there's a, I think uh, the temporal aspect of, of many of the remotely sensed data is, 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 is of, the temporal resolution is good. Uh, and so, I don't know, I, uh, maybe if I understood the, the, the question correctly, uh, I, I, I don't know if it would be, um, uh, I don't know if it, it if it it would be um, uh, it would be very um, if it's 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 much of a problem 
uh, maybe the, 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 the biggest problem is, is uh, a lot of the, this data is sort of, they are, they, of course, like the financial services, there's a lot of details that are missed. Um, unless you, 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 you have, you, you, you survey some of, you do, you do like um, a kind of panel data uh, survey process uh, over time to, to capture some of the changes, for example, in bank loans uh, at, at a more granular uh, geographic, uh, like more granular level geographically. How, how for example, uh, loans are, are changing and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, some of the things are, are definitely difficult to capture from publicly available data. But uh, many, many, many of the data sets in terms of the temporal aspects are, are relatively okay. Okay. Great, thanks, Bob. And so now I'll kind of invite you just to give any kind of final or concluding thoughts that you'd like to share. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I don't think I have a lot to, <laughs> to share. Most of has been shared in the, in, in, in the talk, but uh, I think there's, there's uh, generally um, a good potential for for, for, for satellite uh, data to, to fill in a lot of uh, gaps that we, are, we, are, we, we, we have with, with, with data uh, and data scarcity in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we are seeing this in, in terms of the, the, the quality and, and the quantity of, of, of available uh, images and you know, so, um, I'm kind of excited about this. I think the, uh, the, 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 there's so many uh, in the literature, you see a lot of um, works, for example, uh, looking at household wealth uh, using satellite imagery, things like, like um, uh, economic activity. Some of these things uh, can be captured using satellite imagery. And, and this is, uh, I think it's sort of exciting, I guess. And uh, yeah, it, it, for infrastructure planning, and actually, one of the one of the other works we've been working on is is uh, transportation. Like how how counting vehicles from from satellite imagery. There's there's all this satellite imagery. How can we uh, estimate traffic density using using machine learning and, and satellite imagery? And it helps a lot with with, with transportation planning things like. Uh, EV, uh, like uh, EV charging station planning, right? If you know where the vehicles are, it's easier uh, to to plan uh, where where the charging station should be. Uh, all these uh, very exciting things, uh, uh, you know. And so, yeah, uh, I I think that's all. Maybe. Great. Thanks so much, Bob, for a really interesting talk. I'll now turn it over to Megan. Great, thank you, Erin. And thank you again so much, Bob. Um, that was a great talk, thank you. Um, so now we'll we'll wrap up and I just wanna thank Erin again so much for being our moderator today. And thank you, Bob, for joining us um, and sharing this really exciting work. It was really great to have you here. We hope that you will stay in touch. Um, and we have another uh, new energy talk coming up in a couple of weeks. So we hope that you'll join us for that on Wednesday, October 12th. Um, and we also have an on-campus event coming up on Thursday, September 29th, um, which will be happening at the Thayer School of Engineering, their Jones Seminar on Science, Technology, and Society. Um, so we hope that you can join us for those events as well. So thank you again to Bob for joining us. It was wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for sharing your work. And thank you again to Aaron. Um, and we hope to see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you.